start of the proceedings, we have uh, none other than Dr. Atishwar Das, who will be talking about uh, the wonderful new uh, trifocal lens from Care Group called the Trifobic. Please, sir. Thank you, Shreyas. Um, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm going to share here my experience with trifobic, trifocal, and the newly introduced Acrovision trifocal. Um, it's just an analysis and outcome of this trifocal, toric trifocal implants and extended range of vision implants over one year study, which I conducted in our center. This is, of course, this is my financial disclosure. So to compare the visual equity, uh, the aim of the study was to compare the visual quality outcome of patients who had undergone bilateral trifocal diffractive eye ovals and extended depth of eye oval implant in their eyes. Around 50 patients were chosen. It was done by a single center and by a single surgeon. So these are the lenses we compared, which include the physiol trifocal, which is a hydrophilic uh, aspheric trifocal, the Zeiss AT Lisa trifocal, hydrophilic and trifocal with plate haptic, the trifobic and the acrovision trifocal, which is cast molded a uh, hydrophobic uh, intraocular lens, and the Symphony, the extended range of vision lens from USA. And we also opted for toric trifocal and uh, trifobic, AT Lisa trifocal and Symphony. I think Physiol doesn't have toric trifocal as yet in the armamentarium. So all the patients had undergone uneventful bilateral cataract surgery. We had done the optical biometer with LensStar Pro with uh, TK values which are verified, and we also use Barrett's to true K formula. All the patients underwent cataract surgery with uh, Alcon Centurion or uh, Alcon Legion phaco emulsification with a 2.2 mm clear tunnel. So the preoperative, we did an exhaustive workup looking at the tear film analysis, including the uh, Mabo graph. And uh, also we did the uh, angle alpha and angle kappa value measurements. Contrast sensitivity was recorded using the LCD digital screen. And uh, intermediate uh, visual ac near visual acuity pre-op was recorded using the colon brand as chart, which I'll show you later. Uh, we excluded patients who had any history of uh, uh, glaucoma, macular pathology, any history of prior refractive surgery. Uh, Pre-operative astigmatism, if it was more than 0.75 around one diopter cylinder, we went for a toric trifocal or a toric ER ERV. Patients with uh, large angle kappa were excluded. Mu or quad value more than 0.6. Uh, were excluded from this. So these four IOLs were compared, the uh, Physiol, Zeiss, the Technic Symphony, and the Trifobic Trifocal from Care Group. This is just a brief uh, differentiation, the pros and cons of each lens. What's interesting to know here, if you could pay attention, the Trifobic transmits up to 92% of the light incident. So the amount of glare and halos theoretically is less compared to the other uh, trifocals, including the pan optics, which is there's almost 88% light transmission. And the different technology available in these lenses, I'll just summarize brief for want of time. I have to run through. You see, in uh, bifocal diffractive apodized is the restore, whereas the uh, pan optic is trifocal diffractive non apodized with enlightened technology. And uh, physiol is a trifocal diffractive apodized, and the AT Lisa is uh, trifocal diffractive non apodized. Whereas the trifobic, the Uniqueness of this design is this increased angulation or the slope height and decreasing height from the center, center to periphery. It's the patented design. I think they should give a name to it. It's supportization with increasing angulation. So this creates more amount of light transmission and less amount of glare and halos. This unique pattern of the trifobic trifocal definitely contributes to better visual acuity outcomes and less amount of glare and halos. This is the trifobic defocus curve. This was shared to me by the company. So I'll share our study results later. Here you could see the defocus curve is uh, patients do tolerate up to 3.5 diopters uh, minus and around 0.5 in the plus side. The contrast sensitivity light distribution, again, you can see uh, trifobic transmits up to 80% to 90, 90, 92% of the light transmitted, so amount of uh, glare and halos is considerably less. I'll just show you a brief video of a patient who underwent uh, toric trifocal had an, against the rule astigmatism of 1.5 sanfi diopter cylinder. We, uh, I went ahead with a, a T2.5 as per their calculator. We also always cross-check with the Barrett's 2K online calculator. Here I mark the patients preoperatively on the slit lamp, and this marking 
uh, bisects the circular axis. You have to aim for a centered circular axis around 1.5, and I think you can achieve them without a femto as well. So this patient underwent microincision cataract surgery with uh, uh, Centurion Faco emulsifier, and here you can see I'll just scrub through it. So the patient had this lens implanted and the orientation of this triphobic toric was at 11 degrees. The uniqueness of this design again is the Tacanus technology. You could feel the lens is very sticky. The haptics normally stick to each other when you implant them. And uh, with the Acrovision trifocal, we have the medicel injector, which is much smoother and easier to implant. It just glides through. So this patient had uh, 6 6 N6 post operatively on the second post op tray. This is another case which acrovision trifocal. I'll just run through. This, uh, these patients are undergoing presbyopic lens exchange they want, as they decide to be spectacle independent. So, acrovision trifocal definitely improves the near and intermediate visual acuity with comparatively less incidence of glare and halos. So these are the other images of the lens, videos of the lenses we had implanted. The physiol goes through a 2.8, it's slightly larger optic. It's around 6.25 mm optic. It goes through a larger 2.8 mm incision. The trifobic comfortably fits in through a 2.2 mm and the synergy again comfortably goes through a wound assisted 2.2 mm lens. The synergy comes with a screw type uh, platinum unfolder. So it requires uh, some certain amount of skill to insert the intraocular lens compared to the medicel cartridge given by uh, care group. So the results around 22 eyes, 11 male patients and 28 eyes of female patients were compared. We recorded the distant visual acuity at the LCD chart and we also converted to Logmar and we used the colon brander near uh, intermediate and near vision chart. So this is the conversion scale for Logmar. So the results which said that uh, distance visual acuity at the end of uh, one week, one month, three months, and six months were almost similar for all the three classes of the lens. Here you could see the triphobic also achieving 6 6 unaided, uh, uh, 6 by 7.5 unaided, end of one week, and which was sustained to at three and six months. So, distance with ETJR's chart also we compared and we saw the triphobic excelled in all the three months. Up to three months, the visual acuity improved in uh, triphobic. And it was it stabilized at six months and twelve months subsequently. This is the Colin Brander intermediate visual chart at 63 centimeter, which we used to come measure the intermediate visual acuity. So at 63 centimeters and 40 centimeters, when you use the Colin Brander chart, again initially the one week with uniocular implant, patients were reading up to 20 by 25 for near. Then it improved to 20 by 20 with binocular implant at end of one month and third month, and it sustained to the sixth month. This is a 100 centimeter chart of Colin Brander, which is again, the size is calibrated according to the distance where you measure. We had a similar results with triphobic here as well. Once you implant them bilaterally, we normally take one week gap between uh, each eye to undergo this trifocal implants. Once you implant them bilaterally, they did have N6 or 20 by 20 near vision Colin Brander chart at end of one month, three months, and six months. So these are the battle images which are uh, given by these uh, Alcon people, and I think it varies for which company you borrow these images from. Each one of them justify that they have optimal clarity at near and intermediate. However, I feel that the Indian indigenously produced hydrophobic, triphobic acrylic, which I've been implanting over the last four years, is also giving excellent outcome. So this is the post-operative uh, pictures taken at six months. You could see Zeiss, Atilisa Tri, we did have some patients with uh, uh, PCO because of the tri-hydrophilic platform and we had to yag them. The yag rates are much lesser in the hydrophobic platform. So coming to summarize, an accurate precise biometry is important. Do look at angle kappa and angle alpha preoperatively and opt for a toric IOL if the astigmatism is more than 0.75 diopter cylinder. Aim for a central 5.5 uh, to 5 mm rexis. In uh, my preference, in myopic presbyopia, you go with uh, EDOF for a trifocal hybrid vision, trifocal in one eye, at fusion eye in the other eye. And with a hyperope, I always opt for a trifocal bilateral implantation. And 
another important point, do uh, remove the OVD from behind the lens to avoid capillar, capsular back distension syndrome because these patients will opt for a fellow eye surgery within a one week and you don't want to have any capsular back distension syndrome causing a myopic shift so that they don't have good distance vision. So do have a complete OVD removal from behind the lens to avoid CVDS. So these are the results too. I like to conclude saying that the subjective photic phenomenon, uh, triphobic, was definitely less compared to physiol and atelisa trifocal. It was definitely more than symphony, which is an uh, CRV lens. The, P, the PCO rates were again comparable to the hydrophobic lenses. The near and intermediate vision was also excellent with trifobic when compared to uh, other trifocal, which is Zeiss atelisa tri and the physiol. Thank you for your kind attention. Uh, thank you, sir, for the very comprehensive talk. I think very uh, nicely summarized uh, results. And I quite agree with this. We also did a study comparing uh, triphobic with panoptics, uh, 40 eyes in each group. And uh, the, the results were very, very similar. I think, like you said, both the toric as well as the non-toric platforms, results are very, very consistent. And the glare and halos also, I think, patients. So they're able to read in low light. That is what something surprising. And even they are not able to tell how the patients are able to read well in uh, low and dim light with this trifocal implants. That's, again, a remarkable quality of these lenses. Thank you. Thank you so much, Thank sir. You. Thank you.